Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Register, and I am joined as always by Rob Fox and Jake Goldman. What up, dude? What's up, boys? It's your episode today. It is my episode. How are you feeling about it? Feel good. Do you think I have better Jordans than you? When you see both of your Jordans, I'll tell you who's better. I mean, mine go with more clothes. I was going to say his go with more clothes. Mine are black, white, and gray. But I do like the colorway of yours. It's a little bit more... My, mm, that's stuff though. I always. We were buy. trying to talk about. Look, uh, you know what? Get yeah. on, get on. Uh, check out our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube, uh, and look at these Jordans. And you tell us who's Which got ones are better. Who's got the sexier Jordans? We were saying off air though. What if our podcast was the first podcast sponsored by Jordan Brand? It's Jordan, like our apparel, and we had the jump man. Well, the whole everything. thing, everything. Yeah. yeah. I'll fucking stand for Michael Jordan as much. I I don't even care about Michael Jordan, but I will suck his dick to be Jordan Brand podcast. The ceiling is the roof. Like figuratively, literally, what? Yeah, that'd be sweet. Well, the I'll, the floor is the sewer <laughs> for me. All right, I'll yeah. go as low as I need to go. I mean, he's the greatest basketball player of all time. So, sponsor the podcast, Michael. Please, 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 please and thank you. Um, yeah, what'd you guys do this weekend? Anything fun worth noting? Um, yeah, I watched the Jaguars yeah, so win no. the division. So no, no yeah, no. yeah. I found out my wife's cervix uh, is about to explode, getting thin. Yeah, or whatever. I don't know how it works. I think it's like a, it's like a spaceship door where you know, like it just like it's like eight pieces, but you don't realize it until it opens. It's like circularly like it's like an aperture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a camera lens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Aperture. Yeah, I think that's how a cervix works. Pretty sure. So it's on the way to do it going all the way. Kid with number that. two. Yep. As I said on the Patreon episode on Wednesday, I'll say it here now, uh, since this actually comes out before that, apologies if the Patreon content, by the way, you should subscribe, patreon.com slash softcorehistory, daily blogs, and weekly. extra episode every week on Wednesday. Yes. However, the blogs might be a little uh, not coming this week. Well, depending maybe on Jake take over. <laughs> we step up. We'll see. But uh, that'd be cool. Why would I do that? Maybe we write as Rob. <laughs> just yeah. log in under Rob's name. Please do. Well, there's only one Nothing login. but spelling mistakes. <laughs> yeah, dude, please Terrible do that. Grammar. Just write blogs as me while I'm out. So if, if my, readers, my wife is going to... I am Rob. I'm definitely Rob. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, my wife is going to have a kid this week, so the blogs might be a little spotty depending on when And the again, like born. I said on the Patreon, it seems like you have nothing but time at the hospital to do your job. Uh, the only thing I want to do when I have any free time after a baby is born is fucking sleep. So that's what I'm going to do. The baby's just got to not be selfish, all right? He needs to go into the ICU so you don't have to take care of him. <laughs> the, the NICU? It's called the NICU. The NICU? Yeah. Newborn infant. Or newborn infant. Neonatal. Yeah. Neonatal. Whatever. ICU, I think, something like that. Yeah. It's called the NICU, though. N-I-C-U. They call it the NICU. Okay. It sounds, sounds like, like something in Italian would say, like, hey, a NICU. <laughs> Nick you. It just kind of sounds like Nickelodeon's uh, college program. It yeah. also sounds like Nick that, you. yeah. Or bad CSI spinoff. Uh, terror, yes. All NICU. Three. <laughs> what if it's just like <laughs> NICU? Yeah! And every, every week is just a different, <laughs> a different preemie murdered in a hospital. <laughs> Looks like. What, he. <laughs> yeah, what, what's that guy's name? The redhead guy? I don't know. David so that, it's like a, You're the only person here with a watch that show. <laughs> he just shows up every week, and they're like, ah, he was born too soon, and he died too soon. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Bum, I don't know. Something better than that. I'll think of something and just interject midway through this episode. Right. So we had an actual uh, episode that will drop on Wednesday, recorded already, so you don't have to worry about that. It was a great episode, I thought. And, yeah. Uh, what we learn? What would we talk about on the Patreon? Uh, the last pharaoh ever. The second to second last, to last pharaoh, pharaoh of Egypt. Yeah, ever, ever. And it was kind of his fault why the last <laughs> pharaoh I mean, of Egypt happened. Sometimes too. you get a hat put on your head, and you just you just got to go with it. Yeah, yep. you just go. Yeah. So check that out, Patreon.com. So oh, I already got one. History. I already got one. They're not supposed to pull the cord that soon after they cut the cord. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we also got merch, uh, softcorehistory.com. Um, Newborn CSI jokes. Currently wearing one of our t-shirts. Just a murder. 
in a NICU every week of a baby. Uh, we're, this is too dark. Yeah. But you always know it's a celebrity guest star. Yeah. They just have like a famous baby on there one day. Yeah. It's uh, the boss baby. Yeah. <laughs> boss baby's here. No, no, the boss baby's dead. Smart baby. Um, the, what are Northwest. They? No, it's like when you catch an episode of SVU or whatever from like the killer is 2008 the and yeah. Kathy Griffin is the guest star. Yeah. Kathy Griffin did it every time. But like anytime you make a guest spot on one of those shows, typically you're starting your career there. Uh, it depends. Like SVU is full of uh, like the uh, the Law and Order ones. They're all shot in New York. So it's all full of like Broadway stars and shit who just like take the needed some bucks. Yeah, they just yeah. take the random job for extra money. Like those shows have been running for so long though, I guarantee you one of you knows directly someone that's been on the show. Uh probably yeah. Yeah. Like a kid in my fraternity was a kid that finds his mom dead in Sick. like a law and order episode. Nice. Is that on we resume were, or no, we just found it. We were like, wait, wait, that's you. <laughs> We were actually, uh, we were joking today, so we watched this kid's show on YouTube. It's like a huge YouTube sensation. It's called Miss Rachel. Any parents out there probably know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, her husband, uh, her and her husband were both like music majors at NYU. She also does like speech therapy, something like that. They make these YouTube videos for kids. Long story short, her her husband is uh, the music director for Aladdin on Broadway. So they have all these Broadway stars in their videos, like low key, not Broadway stars, but like Broadway actors sure. in their videos. And they sing and they'll be like, I'm so happy. Like just dumb songs, like it's a bit spider, blah, blah. Anyway, they, we know who the Broadway people are. Cause you can tell that they're like really good singers and they, di- they can dance or whatever like that. And, uh, and there's this one dude, he's like this Filipino guy. And we were just joking about how like all Broadway people end up on SVU or something because it's just like they they need actors and they need money and whatever. And like I was just like, man, one day when you watch an episode of SVU and this dude who we have our kid watch singing like uh, Mr. Son, Son, Mr. Golden Son is going to show up as like some gay prostitute in a mesh tank top and be like, I don't know. He came to smoke crack and then he left. <laughs> I never saw him after that. I but if you want to come back, you're welcome to have a good time with us, detective. A Uber driver in Hawaii that does like small roles in all the shows they film in Hawaii. Which, which are, is a shit ton. There's a bunch, yeah. yeah. So he was just kind of complaining about the industry our entire ride. Sick. <laughs> you can't escape industry talk, unfortunately. If, look, if there's one show you want to be cast in, it's NCIS Hawaii. He ha- he's in an episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. A guy I did skit with in college, like Greek Week skit with in college, had a guest spot in NCIS Hawaii. Sick. Mm-hmm. Shout out Andy Cohen. Today we're going to talk about a, a topic that I feel like not a lot of people know about. Okay. This is, I think, you, you kept telling us before we fucking yeah. came yeah, on. Yeah, totally the topic. But uh, I think it's the, one of the most overlooked, actually, gi- it's, it's actually insane that more people don't talk about it. Yeah, it's a massive historical moment in American history. Right. There's two bigger ones. There's... And then there's one well, lesser one? No. Because there's four. There's, there's four, four, but, but there's I think two. the third one gets more coverage than this. Uh, no, only because of who became president after. Okay. Well, we're talking, of course, about the assassination of James Garfield. Of course. Of course. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would think McKinley gets a little bit more play. <laughs> only because Teddy Roosevelt became president. Because of that? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely JFK. But I actually think more people know that James Garfield was assassinated than McKinley just because of the name. Like, I don't think that was the case until the cat. And I mean that fucking sincerely. Yeah. No, I mean, that actually makes sense. All of the James Garfield knowledge comes from the cartoon? Yes. Like, uh, quite a bit of it. Same with Millard Fillmore and Mallard Fillmore. Mallard Fillmore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm dead ass serious. More people know that James Garfield was assassinated than William McKinley because of the cat hmm. who eats lasagna. I, 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 w- I would stake so much on that. I don't know. So in my research, not sure if Garfield was a huge lasagna fan. I probably hated Italians. He might have. To be quite honest. Yeah. Yeah. That's, he 1880s. hates lasagna. The 1880s. Yeah. 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 Mondays are Italians. Yeah. To, to Mondays this Garfield. is actually a very common replacement for a slur. 
for black people. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody hates Mondays. And yeah. the more I read about Garfield, the more I kind of grew to like him. And almost, it kind of seems like he was robbed of uh, be- being one of our better presidents. Okay. He was a Civil War general. Mm-hmm. Served. Oh, right. and- so let's just get into it. Yeah. Garfield was raised in poverty on the Ohio Western Reserve in a log cabin, one of the last presidents to grow up in a log cabin, where his father died when he was just two. He worked his way through Williams College, where he started working as a janitor and a carpenter to pay for his education. Tough man. Cleaning up puke. You know how I paid for my education? Government. Government. Your parents pay for it? Uh, They paid for the first year, and then they were like, fuck this, and made me get loans. Mm. Uh, yeah, work the Quiznos and Hollister paychecks weren't cutting it on tuition. Crazy how that works. Weird. Yeah. Did you ever show up to Hollister and your Quiznos get up though on accident? Didn't have those jobs simultaneously. Oh, okay, okay, got it. It would have been embarrassing. Right. You're like, oh, I thought today was a Quiznos day. <laughs> Hate Mondays. Welcome to the beach. <laughs> it smells like fucking ass yeah. in here. <laughs> a Quiznos smells better than Hollister does. It does. Yeah. Oh man. Fuck, Quiznos was a great job. But by his second year at school, they made him assistant professor of literature and ancient languages. All right. So he went from janitor to assistant professor. So he was goodwill hunting? Yes. It's probably all the Aramaic songs he was singing while mopping. <laughs> it's like, dude, how do you know that? He, just starts, he finds an Aramaic sentence on, on a chalkboard and just completes it. Yeah. I Goes to the local it. bar. Yeah. Gets punked. And then punks the guy in return. Yeah. It's like, how do you like them? I guess still apples <laughs> yeah. at that point. In fact, it would be a more apt saying in the 1880s than then. Late 90s yeah. of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that was written by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. I know. Right? We don't need to delve into the Louis C.K. bit about it, but yeah. There's a whole Louis C.K. bit about that scene. Oh, uh, my right. favorite scene is when they play Baker Street and they're just beating up people in a basketball court. <laughs> That's the best scene from Good Will Hunting. I just, I just slow mo Boston shitheads, yeah, fighting. You think you're better Street. than me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. I'm more of a town guy. Town's a better movie. Yeah. Who's Kyle? We taking? Yeah, that actually is just Jeremy Renner. Right? Who's Snowplow? We taking? Oh, <laughs> but he's not going to beat men. He's going to beat up his ex-wife. Ew. Did he do that? He shoved a gun down his ex-wife's throat. Good Jeremy Lord, Renner, when did that happen? God, these guys, these guys, just kind of they just by. slipped by. Dude, like, whatever. I mean, never I, I don't mean man. whatever that he did that, but like, whatever in terms of like, everybody's like freaking out about Trevor Bauer right now. You know what I mean? They're like, who's going to sign him? No, she fucking signed him. Literally today on Twitter, I saw a million people being like, oh shit, look what Joe Mixon did. That was a dope ass TD celebration. Joe Mixon broke a woman's face in college. Yeah. Fucking broke her face. Yeah. How fast? And there's that? video of it. How fast was that 40, though? <laughs> like, literally. One star hearts. One star four, hearts. Four forties, baby. Fucking shattered this bitch's face. It is on video. Fucking punches her in the face. Well, was never punished. Very they nice they lady. suppressed the video so he wouldn't be punished. And it came out like years later. Yeah, yeah, they definitely swept that under the rug. And he's just going on like life is fine. So if you don't bring that energy for Joe Mixon, don't fucking bring it for Trevor Bauer. I can bring it for all of it. Or bring it for all of it. Don't don't pick and choose who you bring it for. Fuck. Well, it's like the Sean Penn Madonna thing. Oh, my God. No one ever talks about that. But it's like, oh, he went to Iraq and (laughs) he... Interviewed El Chapo. He he yeah. told George Bush he was bad. Yeah. He, he also, like, tied Madonna to a chair and just, like, tortured her. Right. For, and by the way. Like, shaved her head, I think, too, in some shit. Yeah. yeah and by was, the way, like, okay, maybe Sean Penn was on a lot of drugs at the time. You know who else did a lot of drugs and never did that to a woman? George Bush. That we know of. <laughs> well, he paid people to do it to uh, Middle Easterners. Yeah. But. Hey, do that Madonna thing to them terrorists out there. <laughs> They're going to start talking. (laughs) Jesus. By 26, Garfield became president of Ohio's Eclectic University. 1826? uh, No, by his... Oh, by his... uh, By the age of 26. 26. I was like, wait, what? Uh, Now uh, Haram College. He was a lifelong abolitionist, enlisted in the Union Army, became captain... I think it was Hiram College. Hiram? Yeah. Either way, I don't care. 
became a captain, participated in the Civil War battles of Shiloh and uh, Chickamauga. Chickamauga. By the way, both, especially Shiloh. Bloody as fuck. Yes. Hardcore. But I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I thought he was a general. Yeah, he was just a regular officer. So he was a captain. He was potentially like on the line mm -hmm. in these fucking like real ass battles. And I'm not sure whether or not he maybe got, got shot at, injured during these battles because he was elected to Congress in 1863 while the war was still going on. Okay. So I'd imagine maybe something happened in the battle. Maybe. Or maybe he was not in combat. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. So the fact that he was at Shiloh, I mean, Shiloh and Chickamauga were both intense fucking battles in the Western theater. I believe we lost. We won Shiloh. I think we lost Chickamauga, though. I think. Who the fuck is we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're talking to a Confederate next to us. Well, you're Philly, but you you claim Florida. Spiritually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I claim Florida 1900s. Yeah. Fair no, enough. No, that's it. Also, I claim Florida. My family didn't even get here until after the Civil <laughs> War, so. <laughs> we is us. <laughs> So elected to Congress 1863, Garfield played a leading role in almost every major issue of the day. He helped win passage on the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution to guarantee equal rights for freed slaves. Garfield never actually ran for Republican presidential nominee, um, a role he himself called a bleak, lonely mountain. But in 1880, he attended the party's convention that year to support another candidate, fellow Ohioan Ohioan John Sherman, brother of Civil War General William Sherman. Okay. Also, what is William Sherman's uh, middle name? Tecumseh. It's pretty solid. <laughs> I had a great joke about that a while back. What? Tecumseh? <laughs> yeah. Please, I'd like you Tecumseh more. <laughs> Have you thought about naming your child that? Tecumseh? Tecumseh? That's yeah. actually the name. It's not. It, it's either Courtney Jr. or Tecumseh Fox. <laughs> oh, uh, Tecumseh Fox is strong. <laughs> That's a good name. Is we good? have the name. I can't say it. Right. But yeah. once he's born. Well, I would get a dog before you, your baby was born. I would name the baby. I know. That's why it's a secret to everyone. But once he's born, I will tell you the name and what it kind of translates to. Oh, God. And we're gonna. you're going to love it. The audience is going to love it. You guys are going to love it. Is it Irish? Yeah, I can say that. Extremely Irish? Yes. Okay. Rowan? No, no, no. I, I, that's as far as I'm going to go, but it's hilarious. It's Rowan, isn't it? I know a Rowan. I know two Rowans, actually. Rowan's a pretty popular like Irish name that popped back up. Okay. I like Rowan. Mm. It's not Rowan. <laughs> it's not Rowan. It's Rowan. After the convention stalemated for 34 or 35 ballots, delegates... Uh, Went to an alternative. and uh, So, just like in our Patreon episode, they put a hat on somebody's they head. Put yeah. a hat on him. They Some, put a hat on a commander's head. Yeah. Yeah. A guy that wasn't even really nominated. They're like, hey, what about what about Garfield? What about this guy? I would love that in the the convention, they actually just snuck up behind him, too, and like, put a hat on his head. Nominated. <laughs> nominated. You're it. Yeah. You. He's just like, no, no, stop it. I hate it. Actually, this is a great hat. I get yeah. to keep the hat? All right, I'm in. Uh, I'm yeah. down. Yeah, all right. All right. Garfield was elected as the 20th president of the United States in 1881 after nine terms in the U.S. House of Representatives. Damn. So he was in the 18 years. He was in the House of Representatives. That's a good run before a presidential Did run. he hold any, um, uh, like, cool shit in the House? He obviously wasn't speaker, I assume, but no. was there anything else? Or was he? Just, I don't know what the house was like back then. I don't. I assume there wasn't like a minority whip in 1880, but no. who knows? Uh, in fact, everything politically in D.C. was kind of off the rails, and we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he hoped his term would be highly productive, focusing on civil rights, education, and economic growth, but was obviously cut short after 200 days when he was assassinated. Who was the president right before him? Was it Grant? It was Grant. Grant was right before him. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Grant was president for the boys. Him and his boys, man. He's well, like, he just didn't realize his boys were going to be so shitty. You never do. You never, yeah. <laughs> you never know when your boy. Don't boys hire your boys for shit. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you start a podcast. Then, yeah, that is only your boys. Yeah. The man that assassinated him is the real star of this story. Okay. 
Charles, do you know? I don't remember his name. Charles no. Gateau. Oh, okay. Turned to politics after failing in several ventures, including what? theology, a law practice, bill collecting, and spending time in the utopian Unida community, which was a perfectionist religious communal society founded by John Humphrey Nose. Wasn't he an anarchist? Or was that the guy who shot McKinley? He wasn't an anarchist. I think the guy who shot McKinley was an anarchist. But he Anarchist, was, anarchism was really big back then. Well, yeah, it was in like the McKinley the, time. Well, yeah, like you also had the anarchists in Catalonia, the for the Spanish Civil War. I don't know about that. Did you not yeah. pick up on that last part though? What? Well, no, what? He chilled in this like communal society that was like both religious and a sex cult. Sick. Oh, I missed the sex cult. Part. Mm-hmm. First off, you can just say sex cult. That's religious in its own right. Yeah. yeah. But it's a sex cult for Jesus. Oh. Hell Strips yeah. Pumps for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The community believed that Jesus had already returned in 70 AD, making it possible for them to bring about Jesus' millennial kingdom themselves and be perfect and free of sin in this world. Not 70 AD was when the temple was destroyed in Jerusalem. The Romans makes like, you think. raised it. Yeah, so... Well, it makes me think that they just chose that date. It's like, oh, see, it came back down and it's fine. So yeah, now we can fuck. Because he's he 70 AD. Why would the temple get destroyed if Jesus didn't come back? So uh, you three suck my dick. Because <laughs> yeah. you see how the temple was destroyed. So <laughs> that's, that's essentially... Numerology leads to that yeah. final statement, which is, so you should suck yeah. my dick. See, I mean, it had to happen then because the temple was destroyed. And so, like, yeah, so everyone in this room suck, suck I, uh, my dick. Speaking of that, I got into an argument. I, I follow a lot of weird uh, fringe conspiracy theory subreddits. And there's a big numerologist on one. He's like talking about this number cubed meant this, and this was the number of days past this. Is like, he got the number wrong though. It's like, you know, that cubed is this. He goes, but actually, that's even more crazy because that's how many days. I was like, all right, yeah, that's how this goes. Why okay. are you spending your time on these forums? It's fun. It's fun, dude. Just, if you don't take it seriously, it is a yeah, blast. Just let him exercise his brain. You're on wants. a watch list now. <laughs> we're all on watch yeah, list. Are you kidding me? Where do we work? Are you kidding well, me? We're, we, yeah, our day jobs. Yeah. We're definitely on something. Oh, yeah. We're on watch list. I'm surprised we didn't get subpoenaed for Alex Jones. And that's the, yeah, I know, right? That's the only reason I look at gay porn is to fuck with the FBI. Mm-hmm. No so, other reason. The Anita community practiced group marriage, male uh, sexual continence, aka edging, and Oops. mutual criticism. I'm sorry, what? Uh, kink, Sa- shame kinks, shame so, kinks. Not kink shaming, shame kinks. So you get like, like you dirty bitch. Mm-hmm. You like that? Ugh, ugh. Let Do me, me. ugh. And they edged. Sounds okay. Yeah. Utopia might be the right word. Why? It's perfect. That's what he described it as. He said it was uh, utopian. Well, yeah, it's yeah. A, you, that's what it was described on Wikipedia as yeah. a utopian community. Okay. Um, now, the women at the commune dubbed him Charles Get Out. He was too weird for the utopia? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good Lord. He was too weird for the cult. That's like the story of the witch, basically. Which one? What? The movie The Witch. They're too Puritan for the Puritan comedy. Oh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like, jeez. He's dude. like in front of court and he's like, You're all the sinners. It's like, and like get out. <laughs> dude, it's like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> left there because they weren't intense enough. Right. Yeah. And now you're saying, You're doing it again? He's, like, right. he's just like crucifying himself. Yeah. Go live in the woods, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, I will. The Anita community dissolved in 1881, converting itself into a joint stock company. This eventually what? Became- <laughs> yeah, wait, don't yeah. What? It became just a business. <laughs> it became a silverware company. Yeah, it's it's actually I I know about this. It is like still a very prominent silverware company in the United States. It, w- what is the name of it now? I want I want it's the United sil- Silverware it's, Company. It's Oni- Onita Limited. Yeah, you've seen this shit. So a se- it started out as a sex cult. One guy left and murdered a president, and now it is a prominent silverware company. Yes. What's more American than that? You tell me what's more American than that. It, nothing. No. Nothing. You think I was just going to get a normal assassination story? No. It checks a lot of boxes. This makes Lee Harvey Oswald look like just deeply well-adjusted. He might have just been a guy. He was a guy. 
He was a guy. Yeah. But didn't they just declassify that the CIA had a lot to do with yeah, it? Yeah, the CIA did that shit. <laughs> yeah, they did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, former President uh, Grant was the early front runner for the Republican presidential nomination in 1880. For a third term. And was supported by the stalwart faction. Gateau became a stalwart and a Grant supporter and authored a speech, Grant against Hancock. Hancock was the uh, Democrat nominee. So Hancock, by the way, was, I believe, this is the same Hancock, uh, Civil War general as well. Mm -hmm. um, he's portrayed in the movie Gettysburg, actually. Um, okay. But yeah, he was like a pretty prominent, never rose to the level of Grant, but was like a very, very beloved and prominent uh, corps commander in the in the Union Union Army. Okay. Just... To give some backstory. Oh, history in the history podcast, Rob. I really? know. Right? Well, at least Come he knows. On. He's yeah. adding to it. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Clearly, it's not like me when Rob brings a story. Kings <laughs> like, like Kingsman Golden Circle. Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. sabotage. Rob actually uh, adds to the knowledge of the podcast. Well, now that we've stopped to acknowledge this, yeah. Thank you for blowing me like you're in a sex cult. <laughs> Yeah, you want to kiss? Yeah, Val. Well. Hey, you'd rather have a nice uh, fork and knife set, but <laughs> <laughs> you should give somebody their their silverware and see, like, just for here. No, here. you should. You, what you should do is you should get them some more from there, and then you sub you should subject them to the story, but say you got them that because you thought they would appreciate it for all those reasons. Yeah. It should, instead of, you know how they say the upside down pineapples for swingers? Yeah. It's Onita. We should make like a fork that's just kind of put in the ground. Yeah, you're in Steiner Ranch. No, so you just actually, you're, wearing ear, you're wearing earrings where Garfield is stabbed to death by a fork. The cat Garfield just in the neck, a fork. And that's a sign for a swinger now. Yeah. A Christian swinger. Right. Right. You got to talk. Me Made in God's him. image. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. When Grant lost to the nomination, or he lost the nomination to the dark horse candidate James Garfield, who was not affiliated with either the stalwarts or their rivals. Grant, by the way, this would have been him going for his third term. Mm -hmm. You said that. I, well, I, I didn't know if you, yeah. So, but that, I assume that played into why Grant lost. Yeah. he. No know, one had ever taken. He also didn't have the best reputation at that point. True. Also that. Yeah. But, also, but no president had done three terms at that point. I even tried it. Right? Well, I guess Grant was maybe trying it, but yeah. no one before that even yeah. thought of it to my knowledge. So, Republican Party was broken into stalwarts and the rival half-breeds. I don't really know why that was a name. But give you a guess. Garfield wasn't associated with either. Uh, but So, when he won the nomination, Gateau revised his speech to Garfield against Hancock and tried to sign on as a campaigner to the Republican ticket. He never delivered the speech in a public setting, but he had it printed, never paid the bill, and mm. distributed several hundred copies. The speech was ineffective, even in written form. Among other problems, Gateau had made a hurried but incomplete effort to replace references to Grant with references to Garfield. Sure, yeah. So there's like, Garfield won this war? <laughs> <laughs> Not ideal. Two very different people. <laughs> One, maybe the most famous person in America. Yeah. The other, a congressman who served as an officer in a couple of battles, big, huge, huge battles, but, and then went to Congress. Mm -hmm. He was given credit for accomplishments Grant had done to Garfield. Um, like winning Shiloh? <laughs> Although that would make, like, yeah, Garfield won Shiloh, this <laughs> captain. Yeah. It was all him. Uh, he convinced himself that his speech was largely responsible for Garfield's narrow victory over Democratic nominee Winfield Scott Hancock. Uh, Ga uh, Gatell believed he should be rewarded a diplomatic post for his vital assistance. He wrote a shit speech and wanted an office out of it. First asking for counselship in Vienna. Of course he would. Then expressing a willingness to settle for one in Paris. This <laughs> is a... Uh very shit don't change moment. This is like someone with a Twitter account that has, call it like 1,200 followers, about 1,200 followers, and they're like tweeting constantly, pick pick your party, pick your candidate, doesn't matter. 
and they're like, I, I, I helped in that. I know I helped in that. I saw the I, the analytics show. Like I know it. I know it. I know. Like it was me put helping put a voice out I there. I did my yeah. part. Yeah. And it's just like no. They, they send a tweet on Super Tuesday and they have a great Super Tuesday and it's like whoa. You did nothing. Yeah. You did app. That was my absolutely tweet. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Oh, you were tweeting a bunch. Let me Dirt, tell you something on Super Tuesday about tweeting a bunch. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do a god. Posting thing. on Facebook it doesn't do a fucking thing. It is funny seeing people see their own analytics for the first time now, though, and they're like, wait, what? It's what like, do you yeah. mean? Well, like, 400 people saw it. And it's like, yeah, most likes. people just go <laughs> right past you, dude. Right. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, is just going to lead to a new round of, I'm being suppressed on Twitter, that's, I think. What, going to? Yeah, probably. It, are. it is. It is? <laughs> yeah, that's happening. Yeah, but, oh, no way, By the other side now. I know. Yeah, they're like, oh, there's no way that it's only good to see this much. Shit, shit comes full circle. Elon took over. Now the left's going to be like, we're being shadow banned. It's hilarious. <sighs> it's all nonsense. Yeah. Everyone thinks they're being shadow banned. Everyone's shadow banned. Everyone's a hypocrite. Everyone's Here's sucks. the thing. If you have 300 views, you're not shadow banned. Right. Also, good Lord. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. If you want to be angry about someone you like with 100,000 followers, maybe they were shadow banned or... Or something, or maybe they didn't have the reach they should. I mean, they were showing that there were people who were depressed and reach and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Fair enough. But let me tell you something about you, John Q. <laughs> fuckface. You were never shadow banned. Yeah. Your tweets were almost certainly so irrelevant already that they didn't need to be depressed. You were shouting into the abyss. Yeah. We all that's, are. That's Twitter. Twitter is shouting into the abyss. That is what Twitter is. Everyone's doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people just like other shouts more. Yeah. No, I agree. There were people that were that were suppressed and stuff yeah, like I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, the Twitter files came out, and literally no one cared. Because it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Also, the Twitter <laughs> files, nothing changed I, anything. I will say this, too, as far as these the, the right side people complaining about it. Because there's something that people on the right have said for years, people in the center, too, and maybe even center left to a little extent. Um, where they say, uh, and I agree with this, they always say, Twitter is not real life. Yeah. Right? And then the Twitter files come out, and they're like, this affected everything! The same people that are like, Twitter's not real life. And then this comes out, and they're like, this changed real life! Like, no, it fucking, what? You can't hold those two things. Either Twitter is real life, and it affects real life, or it doesn't. Or it's not. There's a reason that the rest of the country doesn't behave in a way that Twitter behaves. Because it's a small percentage of the population. Minuscule. Yeah. Twitter is the scribblings on the inside of a porta potty. Literally. For America. Yeah. He loitered around the Republican headquarters in New York City during the winter of 1880 and 1881, expecting rewards for his speech, but to no avail. What was he just like, hey, I'm the guy that did the speech. Hey, I'm. You remember the speech? Yeah, this sounds like a stand moment. Also, he never even gave the speech, right? <laughs> no. At this point, just it's just an article. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gateau arrived in Washington, D.C. on March 5th, 1881, the day after Garfield's inauguration, still believing that he should be rewarded. He obtained entrance to the White House. This was during the spoil system when anyone could petition for a government job despite experience and walk right into the fucking White House. Yeah, things didn't really... I mean, you know, even Kennedy was riding in a convertible. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could just in walk... Dallas, you could, places. You could walk into the White House. Well, he won Texas. Yeah, there's a very famous speech by LBJ saying, like, man, if you make it out of here not dead, that'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, one of the last things said to Kennedy... Maybe the last thing said to Kennedy before he was shot in the face... I sent you guys that video, right? I'm sure you did. The subbreeder of oh. him getting shot in the face. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, the one that uh, Dan Ravel posts. Yeah, the governor turned the governor's wife or the governor, I can't remember which one of Texas, turned back to JFK and was like, "Well, you can't say Texas don't love you now." That was the last thing mm -hmm. that was said to him. <laughs> Before a bullet <laughs> ripped his head open. I know. Uh, they, Dallas bullet, fans huh? like to give us shit about throwing snowballs at Santa, but we didn't kill a president. <laughs> no. It's true. But this isn't about you, FK. There's one mean snowball. This is the 1880s. This is when you could walk into the White House and just be like, I want a job. Yeah. I want to work for you. 
Garfield. I want to do that. Let's just go into the White House and be like, hey. Hello. Hey. Let me in. Give me one. I'll just be like, Biden, I'm a Catholic. Give me a job. Yeah, just go across the lawn. Mm-hmm. See how that works out. Let's go. Um, he saw the president on March 8th, 1881, dropped off a copy of his speech as a reminder of the campaign work he had done on Garfield's behalf, uh, and that was ignored. Guiteau spent the next two months roaming around Washington, staying at rooming houses, and sneaking away without paying for his meals and lodging. He passes his days loitering in hotel lobbies to read old news- newspapers and using hotel stationery to write letters to those he thought could help him obtain an appointment from Garfield. Man, at that point, I would want to murder anyone. That life sounds horrifying. Yeah, it's He's like couch surfing at hotels? <laughs> At hostels, I guess. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. There's a, fuck, you reminds me of this 30 Rock joke where this guy was like, uh, yeah, after I got out of uh, uh, the whatever, the Bush administration, uh, I spent a lot of time, uh, I spent time as a lobbyist. He's like, you know, it's where you wear a red vest and hang around hotel lobbies <laughs> and they'll mistake you for a valet and then you can park someone's car and sleep in it for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> I did do that in Orlando when I worked at a uh, Disney resort. Have you slept in someone's car? Mm-hmm. Which car? <laughs> to, av- to avoid my shift, yeah. What car? It was a minivan. It, it, was, it wasn't like a nice car. It yeah, was, it was, a, it was, it was spacious, a though. It was a large car that you yeah, could yeah. sleep in. That's the point. Yeah. That was the thing. I worked at a poor Disney World resort. It was like some fucking shitty poor kids. I didn't get to drive any cool cars, really. Well, that, I couldn't, I I'm can't sure drive you stick, didn't. So. I'm sure you were sleeping uh, on the floor of a Plymouth, some fat child's Cheerios on the floor. Mm-hmm. Floor in the corner. These are the people that would take out loans to go to Disney. Never do that. We've joked with, uh, I think, recently on one of the podcasts. Is this is the type of people who think to swim in a pond in with Orlando their, instead of the swimming pool at dusk yeah. in yeah. Florida do with a very eatable sized human. Needless to say, they didn't tip much. Yeah. What do they have Surprising. to tip? More Cheerios. <laughs> Yeah, you're just, that's shit they can use to pay off the interest on the loan, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Like a fucking payday loan place, too. 25% interest. Oh, fuck it, we're going to Disney. We're going and then we're Disney. getting our kneecaps taken out. Mm-hmm. Right. So, he was loitering uh, at these hotels, just kind of trying to figure out, hey, man, get me. I just need to get a meeting with Garfield. In addition, he spent time shuffling back and forth between the State Department and the White House, approaching various cabinet members. And you can just go anywhere. Oh, boy. (laughs) And prominent Republicans to press his claim, all without success. You wouldn't even be able to get this kind of access to, like, uh, a G5 college football coach now. No. You have to be part of a major news outlet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't be able to walk into that. Yeah. This is, this is like high-ranking officials. Yeah, like, like the secretary of the navy. You just run up to him. Yeah, you're not in even, his office. You're not even sniffing the the front door of like Bowling Green. No, yeah. they're getting nowhere close to yeah. that. Uh, Gattel was destitute and wore the same clothes every day. He was forced to walk through the cold, snowy city without an overcoat, hat, gloves, or boots. Uh, on May thirteenth, eighteen eighty one. He was banned from the White House waiting room. So two months later. Just showed up too much? They're like, all right, look, there are a lot of hobos in here. <laughs> but that hobo. <laughs> that guy in particular. He's just annoying. Yeah, yeah. That that hobo, like the rest can stay. But that one fucking hobo, holy shit, he will not shut the up. The guy that wants to be a representative in Paris. Or yeah. Vienna. <laughs> First or Vienna. Vienna. I'll, I'll take oh, yeah. Vienna. Paris is fine. Paris is a safety school. <laughs> yeah. It's like right now you're sleeping on a floor, so aim lower. Gateau's family had judged him to be insane in 1875 and attempted to have him committed, but he escaped. Now his mania took a violent turn, and he decided that he had been commanded by higher power to kill the president. Well, the higher power wouldn't even let him fuck. No, it let him fuck a lot. No, no. they kicked him out. Oh, because he wasn't into it. Yeah. They were, he was... Uh, Charles, get out. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. He's harsh on the vibe. High power's like, here's what I really want you to penetrate. The president's chest. With a bullet. Yeah. 
Forget these chicks and their <laughs> silverware scheme. You know what's better than a dick? A gun. <laughs> he later stated, I leave my justification to God. So, Gateau borrowed Why not? $15. I'm going to do that in a meeting next yeah. time I get questioned on something. I'm going to. I'm actually going to uh, just, like, tomorrow morning take a dump and not flush the toilet <laughs> and tell that to Cordy. Like, I leave my justification to God. <sighs> He borrowed fifteen dollars, equivalent to four hundred and twenty dollars today. Good lord! Nice from George Maynard, a relative by marriage. Then went out to purchase a revolver. I can't tell you, and I'm doing okay. Like, if, if one of my siblings, siblings, let alone anyone else, was like, "Hey, man, can I get like four hundred dollars?" I would be like. For what possible reason, unless it is to, I guess, fly here and hang out with my children, would I give you $400? Also, someone you know is not going to pay you back. Right. Yeah. Right. If it's like, hey, I'm... It's not borrowing. I'm broke, and I just... But I do want to come and, like, see your kids. It's like, can you make a donation? Yeah. Maybe. But if it's just like, hey, uh, reason uncertain, I need $400. Mm -hmm. TBD on the payback. Right. It'd be like when I went to your wedding, if at that point in my life in 2019, I asked for $400. I couldn't have given it to you. Oh, my God. I mean, we were scraping by on the honeymoon, to be honest. You think you were scraping by? I know you were scraping I think by I, more. I overdrafted my account going to your wedding. Yeah, it was dark. It was dark. Why don't you not? You should have just spent less money. Um, I didn't realize... Parking at the hotel would be like forty dollars a night. You thought it was just forty dollars oh. flat. I didn't, look at, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, it, the hotels get you on the parking. And yeah. Do it. Yeah. Boosh didn't help. Um, well, he lost his wallet. Yeah, Boosh <laughs> lost his identity in New Orleans. <laughs> he lost so. his phone, his wallet, his keys. Everything. So many people that happened to. I was like, is this all your first time here? I know, like yeah. three or four people it happened to. It's like, did you get mugged? The only guy who got it back was my fraternity brother. And he had to chase down a, a black 12-year-old. Not to get it back. He just thought the black 12-year-old stole his wallet. And then his wife was like, you drunk idiot, you gave it to me to keep in my purse. Man, you didn't have to expose him like this. That's nah, funny. <laughs> I will say it's every... It's funny because, by the way, he adopted a, a black right. child. Oh, okay, just as, like, penance? Or? No, I don't know. They just did. Okay. He, he saw him on the street and fell yeah. in love. Gotcha. Yeah, everything everything I did in New Orleans was a uh, business decision. When we went to brunch and everything, I'm like, ah, I really? don't know if I can swing uh, the this, this second drink. Another mimosa. <laughs> Not able to. <laughs> Look, I got it. Oh, man, I forgot about that brunch. God, yeah. I was hungover for that. It was, it was dark. Yeah, that was just a rough day. There was only violent hangovers that yeah. entire weekend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just drink through them. Pretty anyway, much. Gateau borrows 15 bucks from George Maynard. Uh, to purchase a revolver. He knew little about firearms. Wait, what revolver cost $400 back then? Well, he wanted the ivory handle. Oh, oh my God. God. I, like, that. yeah, a revolver should be like $5, <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. Well, you he want, you'll, you'll realize as I tell this story, um, he was a bit of a attention hoe. Yeah, no shit. Like, he knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to be, like, a historical figure, which turns out he kind of isn't. Kind of is not at all. At best, I I don't remember the name of the guy who shot McKinley, but I know he was an anarchist. I totally forgot anything about this guy. Nothing about this guy. Yeah. Which is why I liked this story, because no, they don't teach us anything about him in school. Yeah, it's kind of hard to start with. I love like, sex cult. <laughs> I liked it. And by the way, like, even though we're a young nation... Four people killed, four executives killed. That's not that bad. Yeah, Pretty because good. guess what? The Secret Service wasn't in charge of the president until after McKinley. I know. Oh, and by the way, they only were one after Lincoln was assassinated, but they still weren't in charge of the president's security. Yeah, only so, one in the 20th century and none this century so far. Um, but. That's not like a Biden thing. It's early in the century. Uh, but like... You're going to tell us some plans you got or... I'm not killing a Catholic. Okay. Are you kidding? Kidding me? Actually, if Biden gets killed or even if he dies 
quote unquote naturally, I'm just going to play Catholic victim and be like, oh, another Catholic, just coincidence, another Catholic died in office. And I'll just like fucking flop, should flail around with that. Petition for a sainthood. They both should be. JFK and yeah, St. John Francis yeah. or John Fitzgerald Kennedy. L- yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. So he knew he needed a large caliber uh, revolver. He went to a store in Washington that offered the 44 2 Webley caliber British Bulldog revolver. Sure, why not? Sounds sick. Uh, with an ivory grip. He favored the ivory grip because, like I said, he thought that it would look better as a museum exhibit. After oh, the what a dick. That's what so a shitty. Fucking, here's, here's another, by the way, shit don't change situation, right? This guy was trying to be a piece of history, talked about in he the news, to be whatever. Infamous. Yeah. Kind of Sh- like every shooter nowadays. Yep. Shit does not change. Now, Fuck this. I hate this guy so much. The revolver was recovered and displayed in the Smithsonian in the early 20th century, but it has since been lost. Good. Throw it in a fucking river. Probably Don't is. put that on display. Yeah. That's where most guns are. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Guiteau spent the next few weeks stalking Garfield and in target practice. <laughs> By the way, insane <laughs> that you can stalk a president. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts at this point in history. Again, no secret service. Do Nothing. When, do you remember when Obama came here? How, like, you couldn't get anywhere? You couldn't drive the, anywhere. Because they strategically closed mm-hmm. four major highways. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and when I say no secret service, I mean, they exist at this point, but they're not detailed for the president specifically. No. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, God, dude. When, yeah, when Obama came here, it was a fucking nightmare. I got stuck because they blocked 360, so I got stuck next to Westlake High trying to get to work for an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was nuts. The kick from the revolver almost knocked him out the first time he fired. Oh, it. what a wuss. Dude, firing, what was the caliber? It was 44. Uh, 442. 442, yeah. Okay, so I've shot like 45 caliber pistols before. This is the only pistol I've shot. And like, I've shot, you know, AR 15s, whatever, shotguns. The only gun that I was ever like scared shooting was the 45 caliber pistol because I, it, I just felt no control over it. You yeah, know what I mean? Boom. Like I like and I shot it and would like take a you know, I wasn't just like bah, bah, bah. like I would be like shoot, pause, shoot. And it was just like, dude, I don't know where this fucking bullet's going. I don't feel in control of this gun at all. Anything with the stock, yeah. I felt control it's over. Two arms. Yeah. You got your whole body. But like yeah. well, I mean I was too you know, two handed with the gun. You have more yeah. control. I mean, that's the most yeah. unrealistic part of any action movie is when people are just sniping people with a handgun. Oh, yeah, complete Like bullshit. John Wick, where he's just nailing guys from like 100 meters or 100 yards. Yeah. With a handgun. That doesn't really happen. Nah. A moving target at that. Yeah. Yeah. Got to curve the bullet and wanted it. Wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Guiteau continued preparation and wrote a letter to William Sherman. Ask him for protection from the mob that he assumed would gather after he killed the president. Wait, so he's showing his hand? Mm-hmm. Sherman, at this point, I think, is the head of the army. He is. He's the commanding general of the army. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm sure they're not taking this guy seriously. Probably uh, how, not. How could you? Probably not. Or even reading his letters. It's probably just sitting on Sherman's desk. Yeah. It probably didn't, it get, probably to didn't get to Sherman. No. Someone looked yeah. at that and was like, what the fuck? They just, just threw tossed it. Away. it. Yeah. yeah. That's kindling. It's all kindling. Yeah. He wrote other letters justifying his actions as necessary to heal uh, disconnection between the factions of the Republican Party. So he's saying that he's bringing the Republican Party together. This by, this guy, by the way, it should be noted, um, for the 1880s, uh, if you want to get a... I don't want to be like political about it or whatever. Like, this guy's a lib. The Republicans in the 1880s, like, this is, this is a lib. Oh, it's pre... The old switcheroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. is I a mean, this is a progressive. Garfield guy. was a giant yes. abolitionist. Yeah, yeah. Sure. This is like this is well based on what he's running. He's running on, running on abolitionism, civil rights, right? Like, and uh, greater. Well, Gato is yeah. essentially like yeah. a crazy leftist. Like he's not. This isn't a crazy conservative Republican. Like this is where what you would think of now. Like this dude, Gato's a leftist. I would honestly say he's more of a zealot than anything. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, but all he, of it's based on God, right? Like God he, telling him to do these things. Yeah, but a lot of 
even leftism back then was still based on every everyone was God yeah, oriented for, back then. Yeah, that's very true. And it's um, kind of editing as it goes on what his uh, purpose is. Oh, right. the crazy guy! <laughs> I think <laughs> he mostly spitball. And look, it's not. I'm not saying like. Be like, oh, obviously leftists are the crazy ones. No, I know ones. you're not saying that. But like, because they're not. Like, well, there's no, no one has a monopoly on that. Um, but like, this guy fits more into like, I guess I would call like an, a, 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 like a mentally unwell Antifa member would be. Yeah, like a a real like, yeah, yeah. That that's apt. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. Uh, he went to the district of Columbia jail to ask for a tour of the facility where he expected to be incarcerated. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. So well, he like, was told to come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Is he like Dylan roofing it too? Where he's like, obviously I'll be freed from here. Once people <laughs> hear about my deeds. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's like, well, I can't pick my post as a foreign attache, right. but uh, I can at least pick my jail cell. Pick my cell. Yeah. yeah. He spent the whole month of June following Garfield around Washington. How is that possible? <laughs> Just stalking him. Good Lord. Hey, you remember that hobo we kicked out? He's been like 50 meters back. Yeah, if I, like nowadays, like if you fart near the White House twice in the same week. They're taking you in for questions. Yes, 100%. What did the second fart mean? Your fully, your rectum is used at that point. On one occasion, Gateau trailed Garfield to the railway station as he was seeing his wife. Uh off to a beach resort in Long Beach, New Jersey. He decided not to shoot the president then as his wife was known to be in poor health and did not want to upset her. Oh, that's nice. Better than Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. It was like, you're going to watch this, you're gonna w- You're going to wear this. <laughs> <laughs> Garfield was scheduled to leave Washington on July 2nd, 1881 for his summer vacation not even spending July 4th in the fucking capital. No. Not a patriot. Kill no. him. His time off was reported in the Washington newspaper because I guess it's a great idea to tell people where the leader of our country will be and when. I well, mean, they, they still do do, do that. that. Yeah. It's just that they're guarded now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Biden just announced his trip to El Paso. Biden always announces when he goes to fucking... You know, at Delaware, goddamn Trump announced a million times when he was going down to Mar-a-Lago. Fucking Bush was always like, yeah, I'm going to Crawford. Go to the ranch. Go to the ranch. Yeah. Yeah, they always say where they're going, let alone Camp David or something. Yeah, no security, though. No security. Yeah. That's the difference. That's big difference. I'm going to be dining outdoors uh, today. <laughs> I will be in the middle of the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Alone. Yeah. yeah. I'll be at the uh, Cheesecake Factory outdoor I'm indoor the seating. Washington Mall, but yeah, like, yeah, that, that one too. I will be at the, the Barton Springs Mall. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Barack Obama. Eating at the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I'll be getting samples. In the fake outdoor seating. Yeah. Now, Gateau waited for him after getting his shoes shined, wanting to look his best, knowing he'd make international news. At the Baltimore what, and Potomac Railroad Station. What do you think television station. exists? Uh, Radio doesn't even exist. What is he? he well, it's that pay for words. So I like, actually, by the way, this is the 1880s, right? Mm-hmm. He wants to look his best for the news. There aren't even photographs in the newspaper yet. I know this. But it, it is international news with telegraphs. and Right, but no one will see him. No. but They'll describe him, though. It's pay per word, and they're going to see Oddly, they do shoes. So I I mentioned this in a blog recently on the Patreon where they get there's no photographs mm-hmm. in, in the paper yet at all, but they will go into great detail of someone's appearance, and it will often. I, I noted this the other day in one of the blogs where like they'll basically be like, uh, they'll weigh the the um, I guess like. Not a, what are you, the tragedy of the crime with how attractive the Person perpetrator is, is yeah. or and or the victim. That's another shit don't change moment. Right. Oh, yeah. So essentially, like, if a murderer is really handsome or really well-dressed, the paper will be like, he seemed, you know, so great. It'll be like what they complain about now where it'll be like, was that Stanford swimmer? You know what I mean? Like, he was a great swimmer, but he raped her. 
You know what I mean? Like, it, it's the same thing. It's, it's a lot like... Uh, it's the romanticization of killers, though, too, that we have now. I would say it's oh, very yeah. similar to, okay, weird, creepy teacher molests girl student. Oh, gross. News. Fast. Hot teacher right. molests male student. Whoa, we need to talk about right. this. What's but it'll, and it'll be... It will literally... <laughs> Give in these, this kid a medal. <laughs> in these stories, like, it'll yeah. be a fucking... They'll be like, I can't believe someone so handsome so attractive would do this or like yeah. if a hot girl like kills herself or commits a crime which is less likely they'd be like her of all people like what she had so much to live for this hot teacher why'd she bang a 16 year old right. she could have had anybody yeah. but if an ugly chick in these or an ugly guy for example like commits a crime or commits suicide they'll be like well you know they had so little to live for of course they act out of desperation like that so in that sense, I actually very much understand why this dude wanted to look his best. Because it actually maybe gives a little bit of... Um, gives him a nice nudge and, like, positivity. No, it gives him, like, almost a little bit of, like, credence to his act. You know what I mean? Like, right, because they're not going to be like, well, he's not a deranged, ugly person. Right, like, why would this person do... Like, this Let's person... think about this. Right, this yeah. person wouldn't do this out of nowhere. Yeah, it... it what is the... It makes you consider his M.O. more than you would. Right. Yeah. Other than him just being a lunatic. Right. Yeah. Like because, a raving, well, feral human. Yeah. Like, if the guy was wearing a barrel, right? right? <laughs> like, you'd be like, dude, he's wearing a barrel. Fucking nut job. But if he's handsome, why? Like, why? <laughs> why? Yeah, why do you do this? Why does such a psychology? handsome, insane person do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Garfield. We need uh, to bring back barrel clothes, by the way. Just yeah, bring that back. I agree. Uh, maybe we make a T-shirt that's just a barrel. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, let's try. It. We just let's just sell barrels. Yeah. Fine. I don't know what the overhead is for that, but it's terrible. <laughs> Lumber's not cheap right <laughs> yeah. now. Not even in uh, Russia right now. Siberia. <sighs> they gotta chop down a lot of trees. They're they're probably doing it. Yeah. They're not barrels yet, man. That's the. They're problem. not barrels yet, yeah. though. Yeah, it's a problem. Fair. So Garfield uh, came to the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station on the southwest corner of 6th Street and Constitution Avenue in northwest Washington. Alone, I assume. No, um, but not with security. Never. He was on his way to his alma mater, Williams College, where he was scheduled to deliver a speech before beginning his vacation. He was uh, joined by his sons, James and Harry, and by Secretary of State James G. Blaine. Secretary of War Robert Todd Lincoln... Uh, Abraham Lincoln's son. Yeah. Oh, so actually, Lincoln was present for three assassinations because he was at McKinley's as well. Yep. That's weird. Makes you think. Makes you think. Makes you think. He did it. All three. Uh, waiting to see him off at the station. Uh, Garfield had no bodyguard or security detail. Early presidents did not employ them, with the exception of Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, which clearly did not work out. As Garfield entered the station's waiting room... To be fair, in Lincoln's defense, in Lincoln's bodyguard's defense, when you're at a movie theater and you're guarding the president and George Clooney is like, I'm going to go see the president. You let George Clooney... You in. let George Clooney through. Yeah. And if George Clooney shoots the president <laughs> in the head... <laughs> that's on George Clooney. That's all, all on George Clooney. <laughs> And people forget that fact of it. That it's like the, the guy was well known, the like, most famous actor yeah. in America. <laughs> yeah, that would be like, if like Trump was at the Oscars and Brad Pitt killed him. Right, Leo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Leo. Right. Leo did right. it. That's not on you. Yeah, that's no one who's patting seen down coming. Leo. Yeah, no one. No one seen this coming. You yeah. got it though. You got to follow well, through now, with your job. Now, now yeah. yeah. Like, uh, happens once. Fool me once. Especially with some of the shit that uh, Leo's spewing out right now with climate Actually, change. Leo says some wild shit. Yeah. But a more, like, mundane actor, Tom Hanks. Like, Tom Hanks never says anything political. Yeah, yeah. No. no, Tom Hanks would But be also, true. here's the thing, though. John Wilkes Booth did say a lot of political shit. Yeah. He was actually a very openly sympathetic to the South. So does Clooney. Sympathetic to, <laughs> to slavery? <laughs> yeah. Clooney's like, you know how much cheaper my Nespresso business would be? <laughs> His uh, is it tequila company that he has? Yeah, we all have tequila companies now. Everyone has a tequila. If you if you get remotely famous, if you're on two seasons of a reality show, you have a tequila company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the fucking Breaking Bad dudes have it. Uh, 
what's his name? Um, Aaron, Brian Cranston oh, and Aaron, Aaron Paul. Paul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think was it Casamigos is uh, Clooney's tequila. It's actually kind of pretty, kind of good. Mm. They're, aren't they like based around here? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Garfield enters the station's waiting room. Gateau steps forward and shot the president at point blank range from behind. Oh, before vacation. That's going to be the worst time to die. Did he even say anything cool? Garfield cried out. They don't say anything about what Cato says, but Garfield cried out, my God, what is that? <laughs> Flung his arms up, and Cato fired again, and Garfield collapsed. The first bullet grazed the president's shoulder, and the other struck him in the back, passing through the first lumbar vertebrae, but missed the spinal cord. Okay, so it hit the bone. Mm-hmm. Before coming to a rest behind his pancreas. Gateau put his pistol back in his pocket and turned to leave via cab that he had waiting for him outside the station. Keep the meter running. <laughs> Only going to be a minute. Hey, man, drive me here, but uh, I'm going to get some money real quick. <laughs> like, <laughs> he collided with policeman Patrick Kearney, who was entering the station after hearing gunfire. That's an offensively Irish policeman. Kearney Patrick ap- Kearney. <laughs> yeah. Kearney apprehended Gateau and was so excited to, at having arrested the man who shot the president that he neglected to take the gun from him until after they arrived at the police station. Well, it actually didn't matter if that guy did what he wanted to do already. Yeah. He had no other plans. I will say if you want to hear something dark, and whether or not you want to, I'm just going to say it. Um, so my mom deals with a lot of murderers, literally, uh, as a public defender, not anymore because she's an accomplice. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, kind of. I guess she gets them off. Uh, <laughs> she, but she usually doesn't. Uh, but uh, she, she was talking about this a while ago, like years ago. We were just talking about like uh, her when she has to sit down with someone who's killed someone, and she was like, "What?" Like people were like, "What's that like?" Like, "Oh my god!" Like sitting down with someone who's just like committed a murder, and she was like, "Oh, they're." They're the most chill people in the world. They're the happiest people in the world. And the person she was saying it to and me too were like, what? And she was like, well, they've just like had the ultimate like release. release. Yeah. Like they, they're typically. So this is your mom advocating for murder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to feel good. It's like the old uh, adage, right? Of like, well, a cop murderer always sleeps the best, like in prison. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. It's like they got me. Yeah, that's it. Like the, the there was an old thing where it's like, yeah, if the guy's like sweating and like staying up all night worried about it, it's like he probably didn't do it, right? But if he's sleeping like a baby, oh. it's like he got me, dude. We should only kind of prosecute somebody via eye test. <laughs> yeah, make him sleep in a jail for a while. Did it. So, the policeman Kearney demanded, "In God's name, man, what did you shoot the president for?" So, do your best Irish accent for that. Jesus Christ. In God's name, man, what did you shoot the president for? There you go. Gateau responded, I'm a stalwart and want Arthur for president. So Arthur was the vice president. Chester A. Arthur? Yes. Yeah. Uh, The rapidly gathering crowd screamed, lynch him. But Kearney and several other policemen took the assassin to the police station a few blocks away. He's lucky. Yeah, he didn't get lynched. Yeah. Yeah, because... All it takes is literally the police being like, well, all right. right. Garfield's pretty well liked here. What, in D.C.? Time. No, in the country at this time. Oh, yeah. It's only like four months in. Well, he, for one he thing. screwed anything up that fast. For one thing, it, it was like a, a heat check of Republican presidents. You know what I mean? Like just one after the other after the other. I'm misusing it on purpose right. so we can talk about it later. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, it was re- re- like, I mean, it was... Well, actually, Johnson, Andrew Johnson might have been a Democrat. I can't remember. But he only got there for one reason, and he was impeached. And then it was Grant and then Garfield. Mm-hmm. And then I think, obviously, the Arthur was a Republican as well. Uh, yeah, it just kept kind of going like that. Republicans had a stranglehold on the presidency for a minute. As he surrendered to authorities, Gateau uttered the uh, words repeated everywhere, I'm a stalwart of the stalwarts. I did it, and I wanted to be arrested Arthur is president now. The statement briefly led to a suspicion that either President or Vice President Chester A. Arthur or his supporters had put Gateau up to the crime. So he's kind of throwing some fucking uh, 
He's stirring the pot. He's muddy in the water. Clearly. Good Lord. Yeah. Oh, Chester Arthur's like, I don't fucking know him. <laughs> that guy? I don't know him. <laughs> They're like, I don't know, man. He was sleeping in your uh, waiting room for, for weeks. Yeah, he's dressed real nice, too. He's like, uh, Arthur's like, uh, look, you can sleep anywhere. It's the 1880s. Now, you can just go wherever you want. I'm going to go sleep right here. Yeah. Garfield didn't die from this. Oh. Garfield was carried to an upstairs floor to the railroad station, conscious but in shock. Uh, one bullet remained lodged in his body, but doctors could not find it. Robert Lincoln was deeply upset, thinking back to the assassination of his father 16 years earlier, and he said, how many hours of sorrow I have passed in this town. And Which, by the way, it's not would, even done. would be like if we saw someone get shot to death in 2006. So not like long ago, but not that long ago where you're not going to remember it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know like, what I mean. Like I had a gun pulled on me in 2007, and I can still vividly remember that. You had a gun pulled on you? Mm-hmm. We we fashed over this. Yeah, oh. Garfield was thanks for remembering. Back to Sorry. the White House, and doctors told him that he would not survive the night. Nevertheless, he remained conscious and alert. The next morning, his vital signs were good, and doctors began to hope for recovery. And by hope, they the doctors were just like, "That's hooray, <laughs> pray, that's." Keep going. Hope it works. Yeah. Wee! We're a doctor. Wee! Have fun. It's it's crazy to me that my like grandfather went to medical school only like fifty years after this. Mm-hmm. Like it's crazy. In it's fucking insane. And you're gonna let's just let's just talk about it now. Uh, his condition fluctuated. Fevers came and went. He struggled to keep food solid or solid food down, and he spent most of the summer nights only eating liquids. Uh, Navy engineers rigged up an oil, or a air cooler in an effort to relieve Garfield from the heat in Washington summer. So they made an AC for him. Mm-hmm. Didn't uh, the inventor of Vaseline try to help out as well? Well, doctors continued to probe Garfield's wound with unsterilized fingers and instruments. Yeah, they just kept poking in there. Including when he was first shot. Yeah. They was like, we're just going to finger it. Try to scoop that bullet out. Again, without... Washed hands. Right. Why would you do that? Because germs aren't real. No. Oh. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell devised a metal detector uh, specific, specifically to find the bullet. This is, uh, I assume, because of the time, it's just a uh, a cancer stick. <laughs> it does work, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Like, I, I assume, like, if Garfield hadn't died... He would have had a tumor like a month later <laughs> from whatever Graham this Bell. This is a plutonium claw that right. we're going to just stick in him. Which I wrote about this on one of the Patreon blogs. Uh, a similar situation where, did you guys read this one? Did you guys even like see the headline of it? Where uh, <laughs> Thomas Edison was trying to photograph someone's thought. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he just blasted x-rays through <laughs> his <the> brain. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, we did it. And they were like, what happened to him? And they're like, "Uh, well, after I blasted radiation through his brain, he was so fucked up that he would do whatever I would say. Yeah. Rob, it's even dumber. Perfect. Uh, The metal detector malfunctioned because Garfield's metal bed frame was made of metal. (laughs) There's bullets everywhere. Yeah. (laughs) My God, this man is made of bullets. Have we ever considered the possibility that he's made of metal? He's <laughs> Garfield's a robot, actually. Is <laughs> Steampunk robot. It's yeah. the 1880s. Uh, he's an automaton. And also the chief physician, Dr. Willard uh, Bliss, allowed Bell to use the device only on Garfield's right side, where he insisted the bullet had lodged. Uh, it was on his left side. Right, of course. So they didn't even know what side of the, his fucking body the bullet was in. Even though they're fingering him every day. Mm-hmm. On July 29th, Garfield met with his cabinet, the only time during his illness. The members were instructed uh, instructed the doctors not to discuss anything upsetting. Garfield became increasingly ill over a period of several weeks due to infection, Ugh. which caused his heart to weaken. 
He remained bedridden to the White House with fevers and extreme pain. So the infection, by the way, that had to be fully from him getting fingered by it's his from the dirty doctors. doctors. Yeah. He didn't well, die from the bullets. No. Well, so if, if essentially they had just never stuck their fingers in his fucking if holes. If they just let nature heal, right. he'd be fine. Yeah. That's one of those things, though, too, where movies kind of get it wrong, especially for the period. Like, you didn't die because you were shot. You died from infection because you were shot. Like, people, like, being, unless you were shot point blank in the face, like, in a shootout, especially with older bullets, like, you'd get shot, and then there would be, like, a week where you just slowly died and there was nothing you could oh, do. Oh, it's the worst. It. Yeah, it's the worst way to go. This might be the worst way I've seen, like, a president go. Or any person really go. And we're, yeah, we're just slow, painstaking infection it's taking awful. you. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing good about that. He remained bedridden in the White House with fevers and extreme pains. He weighed uh, 210 pounds before he got shot, and he had star uh, kind of starved because uh, he can't eat solid food to 130 pounds. Damn. Good Lord. Uh, so nutrient. here's what I always wonder. At what point – I've written this before on the Patreon blog too, but like – at some point during that, like during chemo or whatever, there is a point where you're like, hey, looking pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there it is. It's it probably here where uh, nutrient enemas were given to him to extend his life. Nutrient enemas? Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's when he, but what, when was that? When he was 130? Because mm-hmm. like what he was, you said he was what, 210? 210. I think at like 180, he was like. Okay. This bullet might be working. Okay. This might be the magic bullet. Okay, you Jimmy. Know what I mean, J- Jimmy Garfield. This is your year, baby. Wow. Right? Like I'm looking good. Look at those abs. Yeah. I fuck. Some risky business moves, but like right. just stuck in a bed. But, but then they're like, oh, we mind. have to, yeah. we have to keep fingering your your wound holes. Why? I'm perfect. Yeah. And they're, he's like, oh, we gotta. F-. That's the problem. Well, yeah, because sepsis and infection set in, and the president suffered from hallucinations from uh, all this all the time. Pus-filled uh, growth spread all over his body, and infection raged. So, his um, body but, essentially became nothing but bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's rotting from the inside out. Right. Yeah, Garfield's condition because doctors touch are him. like, let me just find that hole, the bullet again. Nothing. All right, get, get your pliers. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Should we clean them? Nah, oh. it's fine. Did it's you- funny because they were probably. Constantly soaked in alcohol, but would never soak their tools in it. Garfield's condition worsened under the summer weather in Washington. On September 6th, Garfield was taken by train to uh, a part of Long Beach, uh, New Jersey, Jersey Shore. (laughs) Where it was slightly less humid Mm -hmm. than the swamp he lived in. (laughs) Can you imagine being feverish and infected in a fucking humid-ass place like D.C.? Traving the flu in Florida. Oh, fuck that. It sucks. Yeah. Garfield was propped up in bed before a window with a view of the beach and ocean. New infection set in as well as spasms. Garfield died of a ruptured, a ruptured splenic artery aneurysm uh, following sepsis and uh, bronchial pneumonia. So he was all kinds of fucked up. I mean, he was just, yeah. At 10.35 p.m. on Monday, September 19th, 1881. Two months before his 50th birthday. So, yeah, he was also at this time the... Uh, this third, sounds like something today. Third youngest president at the time. Okay. This sounds like something that today you'd be out of the hospital pretty good to go like five days later. Yeah, you'd be fine. Who was the Redskin running back that got shot and is like playing, playing now? Right now? The playing? Season, yeah. I forget his name, but yeah, he's playing football. The sport that back then would murder you just by playing it. Mm-hmm. And now the guy who got shot like the president plays the sport that also murdered you after getting shot. No questions asked. Science great. Yeah. Science good. Largely good. It's almost like this is a great time to live in. Yeah. During his 79 days between his shooting and death, Garfield's only official act was to sign a request of a extradition of a forger who had escaped and it was apprehended and fled to Canada. Damn, doing work. So he he let that guy go. 
Uh, most historians and medical experts now believe that Garfield probably would have survived his wounds had the doctors been more capable. Just sterilized their equipment. Mm hmm Yeah, so not fingered their assholes and then fingered fucking Garfield. Just ashing in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might have sterilized things, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, right. Some like ash just, just absorbed. Dump a things. couple <laughs> burning em- dump a couple burning embers into his fucking holes. Good lord. Yeah, like at least Lincoln and Kennedy had their fucking brains blown out. Yeah, yeah, have to go through. Yeah, it all. he went seventy nine days of just torture. Essentially, good lord. Yeah, Lincoln took, I think, and he day. was working for most of it. Yeah, Lincoln was alive. He had his cabinet come, and Lincoln was alive, but he, he was, died in a day. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. Garfield's body was taken to Cleveland, Ohio, where the funeral was held on September 26th. Up into our boy. Not our boy, but the boy. The boy. Yeah. Uh, Gateau went on trial in November, represented by his brother-in-law, George Scoville. Sure. Why not? He received ample media attention during his trial for his bizarre behavior. During the trial? During for the, the trial, like, yeah. He had bizarre behavior during the trial. Constantly insulting his defense team. <laughs> It sounds about sounds right. Sounds like Alex Jones. Yep. <laughs> Format in his testimony in epic poems, which he recited at length. Oh, God. Jesus this guy Christ. sucks. In soliciting legal advice from random spectators in the audience. What Shit. do you think I should do? Shit <laughs> does not. Can can you not see this playing out right now? So I was just exactly thinking about the Alex how Jones it pro- played out. Not even that. Just like Can you even guy. assign, by the way, I don't want to be like, boom, fuzz, but like, could you even assign a side to it? Could you not see either oh, of yeah. an insane person from any part of the spectrum doing this? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, God, like this the, guy's exhausting. We like the Bundy trial even. like Right. Just, yeah, just like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, come on. Guiteau claimed that he was not guilty because Garfield's murder was the will of God. Yeah, of course, yes. And yes. he was an instrument of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's saying, It's always John, the will of something. How convenient. It's always the will of something, and you were doing it. So it's, you know... Mm-hmm. He sang John Brown's body to the court. Ugh. He dictated an autobiography to the New York Herald, mm-hmm. ending it with a personal ad for a nice Christian lady under 30. Huh. I still think he thought he might be freed. Mm-hmm. Like, God, oh, no, are they going to help me out? He was oblivious to the American public's outrage and hatred for him, even after he was almost killed twice himself, once while in prison and once again while being transported. What, by mobs trying to get to him? Mm-hmm. So they were like lynch mobs, like breaking, and that happened all the. I mean, it happened like decades, a century after this. Not a century because that'd be the nineteen eighties, but like into the fifties, maybe the sixties, but definitely the fifties. Like lynch mobs, and certainly before World War Two, would break into jails yeah. and take out usually black guys and just fucking kill them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Fredericksburg has, I believe, I don't know if it's a tunnel or what, but like from the jail to the courthouse, like. There is a passageway yeah. so that that would not happen. I mean, that's the whole ass fucking plot of To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Yeah. You fucking show up, be like, no, we'll do it. At no one need point, the white. Cato made the only valid point he made throughout this entire process. Okay. Garfield was killed not by him, but by the medical malpractice. Uh, well, that's fair enough. He said, I deny the killing. If your honor, please. We admit the shooting. So, just like, yeah, the doctors kill him. That is, I mean, wholly accurate. To actually to the point where it might have been enough malpractice where, eh, that's kind of like saying, oh, well, the cancer didn't kill him, the chemo did. Well, it's like, well, I needed the chemo because of the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. sure, if you want to get technical, right. but he wouldn't be there if it weren't for that. Right. Gateau's trial was one of the first high-profile Actually, let me give you a better, get a better analogy. States. It'd be like shoving someone into a river, and I'd be like, no, the, he, he drowned. drowned. Yeah. 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 Shoved them onto a train track. Right. The or train shoved, ran them shoved over. them into a yeah. car. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, Gateau's trial was one of the first high-profile cases in the United States where the insanity defense was considered. Um, his defense team insisted that he had been legally insane at the time of the shooting, but he was not really medically insane which caused a major rift with his lawyers. Oh, I'm sorry. So temporary insanity. I don't even think they had that yet. Gateau was actively making plans to start a lecture tour after his release. 
He was really cowed a lot of chickens, yeah. man. And yeah. to run for president himself in 1884. Well, uh, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> Vote for me. I killed the last one. Right. Well, you look, if, if you listen to the Patreon on Wednesday, yeah. it's, a, it's a bit how it used to go. You really just get a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gateau was dismayed when the jury was unconvinced of his divine inspiration and convicted him of Garfield's murder on January 25th, 1882. <laughs> they didn't. Sends him to death. They didn't even go into the little room. Right. right. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, what? I like that he was like, I'm good. I got this. He appealed, but his appeal was rejected. And, and he was hanged on June 30th, 1882. Just two days before the first anniversary of the shooting. Did he have any mm -hmm. last musings, last words? He did. He famously danced his way up to the gallows and waved to the audience shook hands with the executioner and as a last request recited a poem that he had handwritten called I'm going to the Lordy. Sure. Do you have that poem? Uh, no, but he requested an orchestra to play as he sang the poem and it was denied. Yeah, that seems like a waste it's of enough of you. Everyone's time. As request with the executioner Gateau signaled that he was ready to die when he dropped the poem. Damn. He dropped the poem and got It home. almost seems like up until the last moment he thought he was going to get away with it. I think he at no point thought he was going to die. Yeah. He was like, I feel like the dancing up to the gallows makes him yeah. think like this is when, it's kind of like the Q thing, right? Where it's like, this is when JFK <laughs> comes back. This is where I yeah. get rescued. Yeah. Yeah. Like the floor, right. the floor dropped out and he was like, whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> uh, so that is the story of the assassination of James Garfield and Charles Gateau. I feel anything? like it was more of a Gateau episode, really. Yeah, it's definitely a Gateau episode. But yeah, well, it, you know, it takes two to tango. It does. Yeah. It takes two to assassinate. Uh, no. Epstein. I mean, sure. Garfield seemed like Just a kidding. good dude, but, I mean, obviously, Gateau is the more interesting character. He is. Garfield's like, you know... He was there, did some some interesting things. Didn't really get to. Right. Never really got a shot. Right. Gateau was, was the uh, sex cult assassin lunatic. Yeah. I learned that James Garfield died literally a step away from being on vacation, which is the saddest way to go. It's the worst way to go. Not good. Like that's I think about that a lot before big trips. I'm like, man, I hope I don't get like crushed. Right. By if a I car. went to Hawaii and my plane went down. It's like, come on. I mean, look. <sighs> Lincoln's is a Pretty big bummer, too, because at that point he had to be like, Woo, we're through the bad stuff. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be easy like going forward, now. but it could be so much worse. We really landed that plane. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, imagine, yeah, you land a plane, like, with three of the four engines out. And you're like, oh, my God. And then someone just shoots you in the back of the head. Yeah. Or you crash your way on the t on your way to the terminal. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> just like a taxi. JFK, <laughs> JFK, random, <laughs> McKinley, random. Another plane just lands on you. <laughs> I actually met a guy who was in a plane that got landed on. He was like one of the few survivors of it. Yeah. He Jesus. said the survivor skill was insane. Yeah. It's not, yeah. not, doesn't sound great. Not great. Um, who's Hitler today? I mean, Gateau. Gateau? Gateau. Gateau. Uh, or, Science. What about the women that denied him at the commune? No, no, they I seemed like they had a sharp intellect. Yeah. Seems like they. I'm gonna sniffed I, it out pretty early. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Um, where the fuck they became a silverware company? That's that's not sometimes you got to pivot, man. What I what I what I learned today is that I'm gonna buy that silverware for somebody. Um, I will say, Hitler's guitar, easily. But if I had to, if I had to assign, you know, a Himmler, uh, medical malpractice or uh, whatever, Maybe no, what? it would be that it was all like just a sort of societal idea that already existed. I'm not. I don't want to outright blame like the media because I don't want to blame the media, but I want to blame the sort of societal idea. That you could already get famous. Like, I 
I feel like from like from infamy. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, just not protecting our president eh. and just letting him go wherever he wants and being able to get stalked for a month? Yeah, you know, doesn't happen. Every Can't do time. that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I There's guess a reason. It's a, I, look, I'll say this: fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, I suppose. But you do have to fool me twice. The McKinley and JFK ones are far more egregious. Mm-hmm. McKinley also shot a, a train station, right? In Buffalo? I think he was giving a speech. It might have been at a train station, but he was giving a speech. I don't know if it was a train station. He wasn't like boarding was a train. Yeah. He was giving a speech when it happened. Okay. Gotcha. Huh. All right. Well, Jake, you learned anything today? I, I just told you. Okay. He learned. I learned that he died like a step away from being on vacay. Yeah. Which is, which the is, is a sad thing. I mean, today I learned everything about James Garfield. I know oh, you need everything you ever heard. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, look, what you really need to learn today is that people have always been insane attention whores. And a lot of times it doesn't work out. And most times it doesn't work Even out. Even when you succeed with your plan, you kind of just get swept under the rug. Also, I had this belief confirmed, I guess, today that anyone that gets kicked out of an extremist religious community, don't go near them. Yeah. 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 But, but then... Probably just kill them, actually. Yeah. Oh, and if you're uh, if you're running a boarding house in the 19th century, demand payment up front. Yes, <laughs> definitely do that. Add it to my tab. Yeah, yeah. There's no tabs for uh, strangers who smell bad. He hasn't yeah. changed his clothes in a month. Yeah, I'm sure he'll pay us. Huh? It's snowy out. This guy doesn't have a winter coat. Yeah, yeah. He's on credit. It's fine. <laughs> Dude, he's been here like 60 days. Imagine how good that payout's gonna be. <laughs> No, he said he's going to be a representative in Vienna, all right? His, yeah, this guy's an ambassador. <laughs> his I'm, money's good here. I, I met someone that kind of falls into this category one time when I was working at the mall in Gainesville. This, like, elderly man rolled up to me in his wheelchair, and he started talking to me about how he was, like, some important person in politics but would never say what he did. Mm -hmm. and I think he was just a guy that wanted attention. He was just homeless. It's yeah. in the mall that happens a lot. Yeah, no, and he's like... And you fell for it. That was crazy. Part. I had nowhere to go. I was sitting at a fucking kiosk. Right. Like, I couldn't leave. I was the only one Just there. It, look, <laughs> there's, there's no bigger red flag than someone who comes to talk to you <laughs> yeah. at a, mall at kiosk. a kiosk. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No sane person goes to those. Right. Yeah. No, you get a, harassed by someone with hand lotion. That's mm -hmm. how it normally happens. It he, smells good. Then he told me, he was like, wait, hold on. He's like, Oh yeah, I'm here with Jake right now. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, that was Joe Biden. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, man? Like, I don't think it was. Wait, what year was this? Was this it was when Joe Biden was vice president. Okay, I was like, was this even? Was this like the Bush years where, <laughs> yeah. like, he was just a senator at that point, and no, they just no. pull out a he random was vice senator president? He's like. <laughs> then he was telling me, he's like, I'll, I'll go to your graduation and I'll bring uh, Joe Biden. I was like, oh wow, I need you to leave, like. <laughs> Then another yeah. guy that worked in the mall walked by. I was like, looked at me like, dude, don't talk to that guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking. You have to show sure. me that. I was like, I couldn't. What am I supposed to do? Anyway, right. That's the episode for today. Make sure to again check out patreoncom history. Extra episode every week on a Wednesday. Rob does blogs when his wife's not giving birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. any day she's not giving birth, I do a blog. Yeah. So. Softcorehistory.com for merch. Uh, Apple, leave a review. Five stars, please, and thank you. Write a review if you can. That really helps us. Spotify, you just have to leave five stars. And, yeah, just tell a friend about the podcast. Help us help us organically grow. Uh, we love you guys. We grow through you. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you join us in the future. And, of course, you can go back through our catalog. It's evergreen. So Every single piece of content we have. Is evergreen. It's good. Stands alone too. No two parters. None. Yeah. Right. I don't think so. I don't think we I don't have think a two parter. Two parter. No. I don't. And I don't want to. No. No. Sure don't. It wouldn't yeah. make sense because then you'd have to do the follow up. Right. Three Sounds weeks later. Yeah. Not soft. No. no. Sounds hard. We don't do that. Yeah, no, we can't legally. Yeah. That's our stepdad. <laughs> anyway, uh, for Rob Fox and Jay Goldman, I'm Dan Register, and you just got soft served. <laughs>